Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, October 24th, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today as we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we begin by reading Psalm 99. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. He is holy. The mighty king loves justice. You have established fairness. You have administered justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow in worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those calling on his name. They called to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in a pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their sinful actions. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow in worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. As a part of the ceremonial law that the Lord gave to the people of Israel, he asked them to bring to him the first fruits of their crops each year. That was a way of, um, uh, for them to show their thankfulness to God, as well as their confidence that just as the Lord had given them the first part of that harvest, he would then follow that up with the rest of the harvest as well. Remember what the Amalekites did to you on the journey after you left Egypt. They met you along the way and attacked all your stragglers from behind when you were tired and weary. They did not fear God. When the Lord your God gives you rest from all the enemies around you in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance, blot out the memory of Amalek under heaven. Do not forget. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and you take possession of it and live in it, Take some of the first of all the land's produce that you harvest from the land the Lord your God is giving you and put it in a basket. Then go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to have his name dwell. When you come before the priest who is serving at that time, say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have entered the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. Then the priest will take the basket from you and place it before the altar of the Lord your God. You are to respond by saying in the presence of the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean. He went down to Egypt with a few people and resided there as an alien. There he became a great, powerful, and populous nation. But the Egyptians mistreated and oppressed us and forced us to do hard labor. So we called out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our cry and saw our misery, hardship, and oppression. Then the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, with terrifying power and with signs and wonders. He led us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. I have now brought the first of the land's produce that you, Lord, have given me. You will then place the container before the Lord your God and bow down to him. You, the Levites, and the resident aliens among you will rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given you and your household. When you have finished paying the, all the tenth of your produce in the third year, the year of the tenth, you are to give it to the Levites, resident aliens, fatherless children, and widows, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. Then you will say in the presence of the Lord your God, I have taken the consecrated portion out of my house. I have also given it to the Levites, resident aliens, fatherless children, and widows, according to all the commands you gave me. I have not violated or forgotten your commands. I have not eaten any of it while in mourning, or removed any of it while unclean, or offered any of it for the dead. I have obeyed the Lord my God. I have done all you commanded me. Look down from your holy dwelling, from heaven, and bless your people Israel and the land you have given us, as you swore to our ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
The Lord your God is commanding you this day to follow these statutes and ordinances. Follow them carefully with all your heart and all your soul. Today you have affirmed that the Lord is your God and that you will walk in his ways, keep his statutes, commands, and ordinances, and obey him. And today the Lord has affirmed that you are his own possession, as he promised you, that you are to keep all his commands, that he will elevate you to praise, fame, and glory above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a holy people to the Lord your God as he promised. In our New Testament reading today, we read uh, Matthew's account of Jesus' transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured in front of them, and his face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you want, I will set up three shelters here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down and were terrified. Jesus came up, touched them, and said, Get up. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. So the disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Elijah is coming and will restore everything, he replied. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they didn't recognize him. On the contrary, they did whatever they pleased to him. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. Our writing for today comes from Martin Chemnitz. Faith ought to lay hold on Christ as God and man in that nature by which he has been made our neighbor, kinsman, and brother. For the life which belongs to the deity resides in and has, in a sense, been placed in the assumed humanity. The adversaries teach that faith ought to turn itself away from the present celebration of the supper, and in its thoughts ascend above all heavens and there seek and embrace Christ and his majesty. But the proper, simple, and natural meanings of the words of institution teaches that Christ himself is present with us in the celebration of the supper, with both his deity and his flesh, and that he comes to us in order to lay hold on us and to join us to himself as intimately as possible. This brings us sweetest comfort, for Christ, both God and man, must lay hold on us in order that there may be a union between him and us. But we, weighed down by the burdens of sin and pressed under the weight of our infirmity, are yet not able to enter the secret places of heaven and penetrate to him in glory. He himself, therefore, comes to us in order to lay hold upon us with that nature by which he is our brother. And because our weakness in this life cannot bear the glory of his majesty, therefore his body and blood are present, distributed, and received under the bread and wine. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the Transfiguration hymn, O Wondrous Type, O Vision Fair. With shining face and bright array, Christ stains to manifest today what glory he shall be theirs above who jo joy in God with perfect love. And we pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.